adventure fans, calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by. Dick Tracy is on the air. The makers of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the two tempting, delicious, nourishing cereals that are shot from guns, now bring you another thrilling Dick Tracy detective adventure. Big guns, hear them? For the next time you have a big dish of crisp, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice for breakfast, remember the sound of the big guns, because those two delicious cereals are actually shot from guns. Sun-ripened grains of nourishing wheat and rice are loaded into the guns, and then these little kernels of grain are exploded to eight times their normal size. That makes them look different and taste better than ordinary cereals. That special Quaker process makes puffed wheat and puffed rice specially easy to digest so that you get trigger-fast food energy more quickly and easily. And you need lots of quick food energy if you want to be as fast on your feet as your friend Dick Tracy is. And here's a good idea. Puffed wheat and puffed rice are two different delicious flavors. So ask Mother to get a package of each at the grocer's. And then you and Mother and Dad can have Quaker puffed wheat for breakfast one morning and Quaker puffed rice the next. That really gives you variety, doesn't it? So look in the pantry today to see if one of those famous red and blue packages is there now. If it's Quaker puffed wheat, ask Mother to get a package of Quaker puffed rice. And if it's Quaker puffed rice, ask her to get some Quaker puffed wheat. And then you have both for a delightful change that thousands of wide-awake boys, girls, and grown-ups enjoy every day. And remember, fellows and girls, there's another secret code message at the end of the program today. So be sure you have your pencil, paper, and code book ready. Dick Tracy has been trying to protect Dryden Small, a well-known Egyptologist from dark forces which seek his death. Small has received strange warnings, and several times his life has been attempted unsuccessfully due to the daring efforts of Dick Tracy. Both Dick and Pat are convinced that Small has kept from them the real reason for these mysterious attacks. In our last episode, we heard how a strange message, seemingly written by an invisible hand, had appeared on the wall above Small's bed. Let's see what the invisible hand is writing. Your hour is at hand. Your end is near. The black pearl of Osiris must shine again. Yes, yes, and look there on the floor. It's another scarab, Tracy, another scarab. Yes, so I see. Another symbol of death and destruction. Why don't you do something? But it's no use. You can't fight the supernatural. They told me there was a curse upon the tomb of Tutankhamun. I should never have gone into it. All the others who have been in it have come to sudden death. Oh, stop it, stop it, Small. There's nothing supernatural here. I know, but Dick, the writing on the wall, we saw the message being written. Yes, sir. And now look, it's beginning to fade. Ghost writing, that's what it is. The handwriting of a ghost. Oh, come, come, Small. Pull yourself together. This isn't the work of a ghost. The man with a yellow face, whoever he may be, paid a visit to this cabin in our absence. How do you know he was here? Why, it's simple enough. The scarab on the floor, he left it there. The handwriting on the wall, he put it there. No, no, no. He might have put the scarab there, but the handwriting, that couldn't have been done by anybody human. We saw the message being written, and there was no one here. Of course there wasn't. The message was written before we got here. We saw it when we turned on the bed lamp. I don't get it, Dick. That. Put your hand over that lamp, about six inches away. All right. I've got it there now. What do you feel? Mm, Nothing but heat. Ah, precisely. Heat. The heat from the lamp. Do you recall ever having used heat in connection with invisible messages before, Pat? Oh, why, sure. Say, I get it. This message was written in invisible ink and couldn't be seen until the heat of the lamp brought it out on the wall. Go to the head of the class, Pat. That's exactly what happened here. The man with a yellow face wrote his message in invisible ink. Small came in, turned on the lamp, and in half an hour or so, the heat from the lamp brought the message out. There's your supernatural for you, Mr. Small. <laughs> You you make it sound simple. It is simple. The rest of this case were as simple as that handwriting. We'd have no problem. But but it's not simple, Small, because you choose to make it difficult. I choose to make it difficult? Yes. You refuse to tell us all you know about this. You refuse to tell us what we've got to know if we're to protect you against the man with the yellow face. There's a definite reason why you're being followed. There's a definite reason for these attempts on your life, such as the one in the dining salon tonight. There's some reason for these scarabs and that message on the wall. Now, what is it? 
I'm sorry, but I don't know any more than I've told you. And I've told you once, and I'll tell you again, that you're not being entirely truthful. Now, look here. I want you to tell me the meaning of that message about the Black Pearl of Osiris. Yeah, that was a queer one. What is the Black Pearl of Osiris anyway, Dick? I don't know about the Black Pearl, Pat. I do know, however, that Osiris was a god worshipped by the ancient Egyptians. And that even today, there are certain secret societies which still worship him. Hmm. Your knowledge of Egyptian history is remarkable, Tracy. Well, unfortunately, I don't know quite enough. But you know what I want to know, Small. What is the Black Pearl of Osiris? I demand an answer. I I don't know, Tracy. I swear it. If I knew, don't you think I'd tell you? I I, I feel rather faint. I, I wonder if one of you would mind going up on deck with me. Just for a little while. Well, uh, I had a date with her. All right, Pat. You'll have to forget your date. I've got to see the captain at once. You'll have to stay with Small. Keep close to him on deck and don't let him out of your sight. Okay. I hope I get a chance to explain to that girl that I didn't mean to disappoint her. You feel better now, Small? Yes. Yes, Mr. Patton. The air is doing me good. Looks like we're going to have a fog. You can see whispers of it floating past the binnacle light up there. Yes. You know, Small, you really ought to come clean with Tracy. Patton. Yeah? That that man leaning against the rail. Uh, he he just looked this way. And his face. Well, what about his face? I, I'm not sure, but it, it looked yellow. It, it, it... Now, take it easy. Don't start getting jittery. Don't be begin seeing a yellow face in every passenger on this ship. Look, look. He, he's moving away from the rail. He's disappearing into the fog. Oh, what was that? Something dropped at our feet. Yeah, I heard it. Let me see. Hey, hey here it is. What? Why, say, it looks it looks like a scarab. A scarab? A pattern. It, it's another warning. That was the man with the yellow face. Yeah, yeah, we'd better get down and get to your cabin. I'll get in touch with Tracy. No, 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 no. Not back to the cabin. I'm afraid to go there. Let's stay in the open. Okay, okay, but I'd better get Tracy here as quick as I can. Come on over by the light. What are you going to do? Well, Dick's in the captain's cabin. I'm going to send him a message. A message in code. Well, come in, Mr. Tracy. Glad to see you. All right, Captain. I'm worried, Tracy. Very much worried. I'm glad you're here. I don't like the things that have been happening on this ship of mine. Well, I'm sorry about the need for searching the ship, but you must understand, Captain, that at any moment, one of your passengers may be, well, put out of the way. Mm, that isn't what I referred to, Tracy. There are other things that are wrong. Such as? Well, have you heard about what's been going on down in the hold? The hold? Mm-hmm. I know. What's happened down there? One of the crew, a fellow named Weeks, was found about an hour ago, totally unconscious. Unconscious? Yes, lying in the door of the storage room. He's not a strong fellow. As a matter of fact, he has a weak heart. That's why we have him down there. All he does is check the books and little odd jobs like that, you know. Yes, yes, but what made him unconscious? Well, according to his story, Tracy, as he was approaching the storage room, he noticed the door was open, which was unusual. As he began to investigate, he suddenly saw, standing in the doorway itself, a strange-looking figure. The next thing he remembers, he was lying on a cot. And the ship's doctor was working over him. Huh. He's not given to seeing things, is he? No, I don't think so. He's a stable, dependable fellow. At any rate, he's never seen things before. Well, in that case, I don't think it'd be a bad idea to investigate that storage room. Now, about the search for the man with the yellow face, Captain. Yes, I wanted to talk to you about that, Tracy. We we don't seem to be making much progress. Matter of fact, Tracy, we're not making any progress at all. Yes, yes, I was afraid of that. Oh, excuse me. Come in. There's a message for Mr. Tracy, sir. Oh, give it here. Where did you get this? It was given to me by a gentleman down in deck A, sir. Thank you. Excuse me, Captain. Yes, certainly. It's a code message from Pat. Hmm? Prisoner 20, 21, 12, 16, 7, 10, 18, 22. Uh, will you excuse me, Captain? I've got to join Mr. Patton on deck immediately. Uh, nothing wrong, is there, Tracy? I don't know. That's what I want to find out. And I've got to find out fast. Well, I'll go along with you, Tracy. I've got to go up to the bridge, and this will be on my way. Glad to have your company, Captain, but let's hurry. Uh, we can take this companionway here, Tracy. It leads down to deck A. Fine. Uh, here we are. 
Decky. Uh, I don't see Mr. Patton, do you? No, but this fog is getting thicker. Mm-hmm. He may be down at the other end. Come on. Well, I'll leave you here, Tracy. Man I... overboard! Man overboard! Yes. Man overboard, Tracy. Get down there as fast as you can. I'll see the water in the boat over the side. Right. Man overboard! Man overboard! Hey, hey, you there. Where is he? Oh, he's there. He's sick. Man overboard! Right and small. What's happened here? The man with the yellow face. Patton's horse with him. Yes, yes. What happened? Overboard. Patton. Patton was thrown overboard. What? Pat overboard? Wait, Tracy, what are you doing? Why are you taking off your coat? Why do you think? I'm going after Pat. Stop! Don't! Another man overboard! Another man! Another man. Tracy, they'll both be found! Patton and Tracy, too! Will Dick save Pat? Or has the detective's friend been swallowed up by the black waters in the night? Dick will save him if anyone can. But now the makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, those two popular, delicious, quick energy-giving cereals that are shot from guns, invite you to attend another meeting of the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. Here comes Dick Tracy Jr. now. The 20th meeting will now come to order, patrol members. And let's be sure we all have pencils and paper ready to take down today's secret code message. Are you going to give Dick Tracy's friends the message that Pat sent Dick today, or have you a special secret patrol message, Junior? Oh, both, Mr. Quaker Man. First, I'm going to repeat the message that Pat sent to Dick Tracy. Good. Are you ready, patrol members? Here it is. Prisoner 20, 21, 12, 16. 7, 10, 18, 20, 2. Once more, Junior, to make sure everyone got it. All right, Mr. Quaker Man. It's prisoner 20, 21, 12, 16, 7, 10, 18, 20, 2. Fine. And now what's the special patrol message, Junior? Here it is. Are you all ready? It's Buffalo. 21, 12, 14, 10, 12, 4. 10, 20, 13, 3, 6, 10, 20, 13, 3, 21. 1, 8, 14, 5. Better repeat that one too, Junior, I think. Okay. Ready, everyone? It's Buffalo... 21, 12, 14, 10, 12, 4. 10, 20, 13, 3. 6, 10, 20, 13, 3, 21. 1, 8, 14, 5. Well, that sounds very important, Junior. It is. It's a special order for patrol members. But how about the fellows and girls who aren't members and can't decode the messages? Well, we can't very well give away the patrol secret. Of course not. I can't imagine any real wide-awake boy or girl not joining, can you? Not unless they don't know how to join on the Dick Tracy Secret Service Patrol. So maybe you better tell them, just in case there are some fellows and girls listening in for the first time. Good idea. Well, here's how you can join the patrol and get the secret code, the patrol pledge, and the membership badge so you don't miss any of the fun. Just tear the tops off two packages of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or one of each. Put them in an envelope with your name and address printed on a plain piece of paper and mail them to Dick Tracy, Box L, Chicago. Then you get in on all the secret detective activities, too. And Dick Tracy sends you a secret code book, a patrol pledge, and a special badge, all free. Tell Mother how those nourishing, delicious cereals are shot from guns to make them specially easy to digest. So ask her to get you some Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice at the grocer's. Calling all adventure fans. Calling all Dick Tracy fans. Stand by for another exciting Dick Tracy adventure tomorrow at this same time. That is all. (laughs) 